Welcome to the Know It All for the week of April 17th. I'm Meg Turney, and this week we've got so much Mortal Kombat news, an unsanctioned movie edit, and apparently Pokemon makes kids gay. Hmm. Let's jump right into it with video game news. Pastor Creflo Dollar is a controversial televangelist with a mega church following who claims that his ministry conducted a study and found that Pokemon makes kids gay. His proof is the creme de la creme of you can't make this shit up and includes the phallic shape of some Pokemon, Charmander continuously stroking his tail, and Bulbasaur making male children deny their natural love of boobies due to his combination of a strange name and a boob shape on his back. Has this dude ever met a gay guy? Gay men love boobies. Everyone loves boobies. I digress. <laughs> he also believes Ash and Brock are too close for comfort and that Mew is the perfect representation of the alleged third sex. His words, not mine. This guy also had the nerve to ask his congregation for $60 million to buy himself a new luxury jet, so it's kind of safe to say that he's packing a couple master balls in his panties. Moving right along to the week's biggest release, Mortal Kombat X debuted this week, but the release was far from smooth after PC users complained that the streaming download system the game employed didn't actually work. After the initial 3 gig install, PC gamers were supposed to be able to jump right in on the action, while the rest of the game installed in the background, but none of the remaining install packs actually began downloading on their own. As a result, the game crashed for many users, and getting it to work, at least for a little while, required selecting each individual install pack under the DLC section of the game's listing on Steam. That wasn't the only overly graphic kick to the testicles the game faced this week. An MMA fighter by the name of Felice Herrig has accused developer NetherRealm Studios of stealing her likeness for one of the game's new fighters, Cassie Cage. Herrig took to her Instagram several times over the last few months to share her disappointment, and even believes the character's selfie fatality was lifted from her persona as well as Herrig is well known in the UFC for being particularly obsessed with selfies. I asked you guys if you saw the similarity and most of you weren't buying it, with my favorite comment coming from Arkham Knight who said, my ugly mug was the likeness for Goro, where's my money? Jesus Christ. By the way, the runner up for best comment is someone with the account Black Jesus who responded to that comment by saying, the Lord has spoken. I love it. From the Lord to the Queen, the newest expansion for Destiny, House of Wolves, was given a release date and a sexy new trailer this week. You'll be welcome into the Reef on May 19th. The expansion includes new story missions, three competitive multiplayer maps, a new strike, a new competitive elimination mode in the Crucible, and a new arena activity called the Prison of Elders, in addition to new gear and weapons. Noticeably absent is a new raid, and that's not an error. Bungie has released a statement saying, House of Wolves will not have a raid activity. We didn't make this decision lightly. Our team has been humbled by the reception of raids in Destiny, and we are creating a new raid for a release later this year. They are hoping that the arena activity I mentioned earlier is enough to keep fans happy happy, but what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. That's all for video game news this week, but don't forget you can get a full hour of video game news discussion via the patch. This week, Gus Ryan and I discussed how lame buying easy fatalities is and tried to name all the characters in Tiny Toons. We sucked at it. If you're feeling a little frisky and you have like 8 to 10 hours to read dialogue, this week's episode of the Patch Video Game Book Club is all about Katawa Shoujo. We discussed the challenges of picking the right lady for you, and we pretty much all agreed that Emmy is the best one. If esports are more your speed, on this week's episode of The Leaderboard, Jared and I discuss who's in the finals of the LCS and how awesomely adorable it is when a 17-year-old kicks everyone's ass in a Mortal Kombat tournament. Alright, enough plugs, let's talk movies and TV. Now we can't start any talk about movies without mentioning that a new teaser is out for The Force Awakens. At nearly two minutes long, I would call it a trailer, but they're calling it a teaser, so I'm going with it. We're shooting the know-it-all a little bit early this week, so it actually just came out as of the writing of this script, so as I speak, the lovely lads over at Foon House are breaking down what you might have missed from it, and you can check out all that sweet Star Wars action by clicking the annotation. Alright, so last Sunday was a day of days, an event so hallowed and holy, we are only graced with its presence once a year. It was the season premiere of Game of Thrones. While HBO should have been doing a slow dance under a waterfall of money, they were instead furious over the news that the first four episodes of the season had been leaked a full day earlier. In a statement, HBO shared that the leak came from a source authorized to receive the episodes and that they were investigating how the breach occurred. I think we all know at least one person out there who's never, ever getting another screener from HBO. Despite the leak, the show still smashed in the ratings, so the night might be dark and full of pirates, but HBO is still raking in the funds. Speaking of large sums of money, Joss Whedon and Lionsgate have been sued by a man who claims the movie Cabin in the Woods, which Whedon co-wrote, ripped off his book The Little White Trip, A Night in the Pines. 
Peter Gallagher, the book's author, self-published his book back in 2006, and in his suit says, like the book, Cabin in the Woods tells the story of five friends, three guys and two girls, between the ages of 17 and 22, who take a trip to a remote cabin in the woods. The cabin's previous inhabitants were murdered by the father of the family, who returns to terrorize the group of friends. In the end, it is revealed that the friends are being filmed and manipulated by persons behind the scenes, thus becoming inadvertent characters in a real-life horror show for the enjoyment of others. He's seeking at least $10 million in damages. Ouch. And finally, Chappie director Neil Blomkamp is not happy with Sony Japan after they released a statement ahead of his film's Japanese release, claiming that they had re-edited the film to bring the rating down to PG-12 in order to appeal to a wider audience. Now, the problem with that statement is that they claim to have Blomkamp's blessing, but he tweeted that that's a lie. Because the film has not yet been released, there's no way of knowing just what was cut, but it's probably safe to say that somebody is in a lot of trouble. Alright guys, that's it for this week's episode of The Know-It-All. Don't forget, you can get more Rooster Teeth awesomeness on Mondays with the RT Podcast, on Wednesdays with The Patch, and you can keep up with all the news as it happens over on The Know. Have a good weekend, everyone. Heart you!